Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly, and welcome to our review. Oops, let me get this all the way out of the way. Okay, so we're going to do start with number one and go keep going until we can't go anymore. Determine the fo following property is a solid liquid or gas by placing an X in the box. Some properties may describe multiple states of matter. The only one you can squeeze and make smaller is a gas. Um, liquids and solids don't. Definite shape, solid only. Definite volume is solid and a gas fills the entire container regardless of the volume is the gas greatest force of attraction between particles is a solid heat of fusion occurs between these two states so heat of fusion is melting freezing so that's between solid and liquid heat of vaporization between these two states guess what that's Boiling, condensing. Made of particles, all of them. No definite shape. Liquids and gases can change their shape. No definite volume. That's only a gas. Of the three, pack the loosest. That's a gas. That's why it's compressible. Of the three, pack the tightest. Solid. We're going to say solid every once in a while. It's a liquid. That's true for water but only for water. Nothing else does that. Particles are free to move about the most. That's a gas. State of substance at a temperature. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, state of a substance at a temperature above the melting point, but below the boiling point. It's a liquid. If you're warmer than melting, you've melted. You're liquid. Below the boiling point, you're not a gas yet, so you're a liquid. State of substance at a temperature below the melting point. That's a solid. Colder than melting is frozen. State of substance um, at temperatures above the boiling point is a gas. Takes the shape of the container is a gas. And the liquid for the bottom. Okay. Weakest force of attraction between particles is a gas. Draw a particle picture of a solid. Easiest way to do these is to make them very regimented. They should not be touching. I'm afraid I have one touching. So I'm going to erase it to make sure it's not touching. It has to be on the bottom. Liquid, I do pretty much the same thing, but I just turn them a little bit. And notice how they're not as neat. But they have to be on the bottom. Okay. Gas has to fill the whole container. Whoops. Now, if I was doing this better, I'd make sure I had the same number of particles in all the spots, but I didn't. CCL4 is placed in previously evacuated container at 30, and so the CCL4 evaporates in the box below. Draw a particulate matter, so you've got a liquid, to show the species in the container after some has evaporated. So if some has evaporated... Um, evaporate does not break down into smaller pieces, right? So I've got CCL4 molecule. Only some of it has evaporated. So I'll put these in here as a liquid. I'm trying to make them kind of sloppy because they're liquids and not organized like solids. I'm getting that shape from CCL4. Remember, if it turns into a gas, it doesn't turn into another substance. So I've got to put a couple of them up high. There you go. What do you expect to have a greater dipole moment? In each case, justify your answer. C bonded to N or C bonded to F? C bonded to F. Uh, bigger electronegativity difference. Um, and if it doesn't have to say this whole thing, but remember, um, F is smaller, more attractive. So bigger electronegativity. It doesn't say you have to have all that, but if it didn't make sense to you, N is bonded to P or N is bonded to SB. So I've got phosphorus and antimony is way down here. 
So in this case, we should have a greater dipole moment. Um, I'm going to look at electronegativity differences again. So let's make sure I've got P and SB in the right spot. Yep, so SB is larger. So SB has a smaller than P. So N bonded to P. So N is up here. So N bonded to P or N bonded to SB. So the most polar would be N to N to SB biggest electronegativity difference. Um, according to Coulomb's law, does the force of attraction increase decrease when the same as the size of the charge difference increases? It's the size of the charge difference increases. So remember, bond energy is Q1, Q2 over radius squared. So if the difference in charge is greater, that means Qs go up. Q up, bond energy up, algebraically. Force of attraction, so force of attraction increases. So that's bond energy is the force of attraction. The image above is electron density of HF. Is the molecule polar or nonpolar? It is polar. This is electron dense. This is electron not dense. To the left side of the molecule labeled delta positive and delta negative. Not dense would be delta positive, dense would be delta negative. Uh, there you go, because it's more dense and it's not electron, not dense. That's why. How does the neutral particle like HF get a partial positive and partial negative charge? Um, F has more protons, more attracted protons. So I'm going to rewrite that word attractive has more attractive protons. So electrons um, go to F more, making it, oops, I spelled making negative. Well, I suppose delta negative. What difference between a single bond intermolecular force and intermolecular force? What's the difference between? Um, a single bond is smaller and 10 times stronger. Um, or more. Explain how limb dispersion forces, swell and dispersion force include a part of the diagram. So I have 50 electrons and 50 electrons. And then by random, whoop, 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 I get 52 electrons, I get 48 electrons, which causes a delta positive and a delta negative. And then whoop, 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 they could go back to 50-50 or the like, or even 48-52. Uh, because electrons are moving around so much. Dipole diet force form include a particle diagram. So let's say we have something like HF and the electron. What I would do is I would put dots around where the electron spends its time. It is a shared electron, but notice how you'd have that dot means electron at a given time. So electrons are on F more, so polar. So there's a negative end and a positive end. Hydrogen bonds form include a particle diagram. Oh man, okay, so here we go. Here's a little water. We got a lone pair. I've got another little water. I like for intermolecular forces to always emphasize where the molecules are. This is the delta negative. This is the delta positive. A little dashed line of love. Dipole-dipole forces form. Include a particle diagram. 
I'm just going to use HF again. So in HF, here's my molecule. This end is delta negative. This end is delta positive. So if I had another hydrogen particle creeping along in here, let's see if I'll, I'll draw like this. You get the uh, animation of it. Delta negative, delta positive. So what's going to happen is this guy is going to come. Ch -ch -ch. Oh, there you are. And then showing a little love. The dashed line love because it's longer than the other one. Um, ion dipole forces include a picture. So I have a positive, well, well actually, let's label them. Let's say it's NaCl. I have Na positive, Cl negative. Remember, um, the dipole is typically water. I know it's hydrogen bonds, you might want to say that, but, and it's going to be an intermolecular force. Um, I'm going to circle the water molecules because I like to circle my molecules. I think it gives me a better feel of whether it's an inter or intra force. Okay. Um, CL is going to have almost the same thing, except for because CL is negative, I'm going to have the ears aimed at it for the Mickey Mouse. So this is the, the delta positive part of the ears. And you can tell that I've got myself a full uh, negative ion. So there you go. All right. Explain polarizability. Um, electrons move. And one end is positive, And the other is negative, making. And I keep misspelling making. The molecule, I abbreviate molecule MC, polar. Remember, polar means ended with one end positive, the other end negative. Explain how polarizability increases with an increase in the number of electrons. There is a better chance. I'm going to change that to probability than chance. Better probability. Of uneven electron distribution. Therefore, polarity. Explain how polarizability increases and increase in the surface area of the molecule. So our polarizability means that more surface area means a higher, higher probability of electron imbalance. All right, 12. Answer questions following about propene and vinyl chloride, shown above. Identify the intermolecular forces present in each molecule. These are uh, all nonpolar, so that is dispersion only. This one has some polar to it. So it's dipole, dipole, and remember everything, not didole, everything has dispersion, dipole, dipole, and dispersion. Oops. All right, the boiling point of the liquid propene is 226, is lower than that of vinyl chloride. Count for this difference in terms of the types and strength of our molecular forces. Um, dipole is stronger because it has larger charges and it is permanent. Stronger forces. Increase boiling point. All right, so the two types of intermolecular forces present in H2S are dispersion forces and dipole dipole forces. Compare the strength of the London dispersion forces in H2S to the strength of the dipole dipole forces in liquid H2O. 
Okay, so O to H is more polar. Therefore, stronger. Um, yep. Perform the following conversions. A rigid container contains 450 milliliters. Remember, move the decimal three places. How many milliliters are in two liters? 2,000 milliliters to the proper number of sig figs. That would be 2.00 E3 milliliters. 125 milliliters mercury to, HT, to ATM. 125 millimeters of HG times 760 millimeters of HG. Conversion factor on your equation sheet. And one ATM. Calculators assemble. 125 divided 760 is 0.165. Term the pressure in kilopascals if it is measured in 172 atmospheres. Easy cheesy. 1.72 atm times 1 atm or 101.3 kilopascals. Again, that conversion factors on your equation sheet. And I have 174.2. All right. Look at all those guys. And it's a fine question in terms of principles of chemical bonding and intermolecular forces. In each explanation, where the comparisons be made a complete, yeah. Both substances, yeah. Yeah, the complete, yeah. Okay. One atmosphere in 298, pentane is a liquid, while pro propane is a gas. Um, pentane has more electrons, therefore more polarizable and stronger IMFs. In higher IMFs, increase, what do you say, boiling point or melting point? Oh, yeah, we'll go with boiling point. What happens to you Kate? Methanol is a liquid where propane is a gas. Um, methanol has H bonds. Uh, which are stronger. Than dispersion. Stronger intermolecular forces equals higher boiling point. Consider bromine and chlorine, which intermolecular force they both would exhibit. Um, dispersion, because both are nonpolar. Dispersion press or say dispersion only. Which has stronger intermolecular forces? Well, looking at bromine and chlorine, Br2 has more electrons, therefore more polarizable and stronger. One of the above is a liquid, the other one is a gas. Identify the gas, explain why. Cl2 because weaker IMFs as told in B. 17. Consider the halo acetic acid up above. Illustrate above with an X in place of the halogen. What intermolecular forces are present in all haloacetic acid? Well, this part right here is H bonding. This part right here is dipole. This part right here is another dipole. And all have dispersion because they have electrons. Which haloacetic acid would you expect to have the highest boiling point? Chlorine, bromine, or iodine? So it's going to be the one that's the most electronegative, which is chlorine has the highest 
electronegativity, therefore most polar. Oh, I just did that. All right. 18. Ask the following questions about the isomers of ethanol and dimethyl ether. Explain why methanol and dimethyl ether are isomers. Same atoms. Different order. Identify all intermolecular forces in both molecules. This guy right here has H bonding. And they all have dispersion. This right here has some polarness, so this can be dipole, dipole, and dispersion. Um, ethanol is a boiling point of 78. Well, dimethyl ether is negative 24. Identify a molecular force that are most responsible for the differences. Um, H bonding is stronger. and increases boiling point. 19. Show above the Lewis structures for known and 234 trifluoropentane. Identify the molecular forces. All C's and H's. Dispersion only. Oops, I circled a little too vigorously. Dispersion only. Polar, polar, polar. So dipole dipole, and remember everything has it, and dispersion. Known as higher boiling point than 234 trifluoropentane, even though they have nearly identical molar acids. Nonane has a higher boiling point, okay? Which intermolecular force most responsible for this difference? So if we just told you that nonane is stronger and dispersion is stronger, uh, what intermolecular force? That's gonna be dispersion. Um, explain how intermolecular forces um, the sum of movable electrons changes IMF. And I'll do 20. Oh, I'm so close to being done. Shown above are the low structures for propanoic acid and butanoic acid. Propanoic acid has a lower boiling point than butanoic acid. Identify all forces in each. So we got H bonding, we've got dipole. And everything's got dispersion. Hi, Marion. I pull. I pull. And dispersion. Which intermolecular force is most responsible for the difference? Dispersion. Because butanoic has more. Has more electrons. Bromine has a higher boiling point than Brickle. I explain why in terms of intermolecular forces. Um, um, Br2 has more electrons, therefore stronger dispersion because it's more polarizable. Energy required to boil ethanol. Consider the statement as ethanol boils, energy goes into breaking. It does not. False. Boiling breaks IMFs, not covalent bonds. And that is it. And to that, I will say toodles.